love of God and welcome you to the worship service here at Greater St. Paul Baptist Church, 896 South Adams Avenue in the Queen City of the Washita, Camden, Arkansas. Come on now and join us as we go into the worship service. Good morning, Greater St. Paul. Our, li our scripture did come out of Psalm, the 40th chapter, verse 1 through 5, and it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet up on a rock, and established my gift goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respect it, not the proud, not such as turn aside to lies. God word for God people. Let's pray. Our God now, Father. We come again, Father, with bowed heads and humble hearts, giving thanks again for all your many blessings, Heavenly Father. Father, we come thanking you for yesterday. Thank you for the rest last night. Thank you for the early rise this morning, Lord. Started us on our way. Father, we come this morning thanking you for looking down on all the sick and the needy, wherever they may be this morning. Father, we pray for the one that's out there in the world lost, not knowing which way to turn this morning. Father, we pray that you lead them into your fold before it's everlasting too late. Father, we come this morning just thanking you for blessing church families everywhere this morning. We pray for every church door that opened this morning, every soul that enter in, Father, praying that something will be said to help them on up the heavenly highway. Father, we thank you so much for all your many, many blessings, Lord. Father, we come praying for our young people this morning. Praying that you lead them in, Father, for us everlasting to them. Put them on the path of righteousness, Lord. We thank you so much for blessing our church family as a whole. Father, we pray that you just continue to be with us, guide us, and keep us. Strengthen our pastors. Just keep on keeping on preaching the uncompromising gospel, Father. Strengthen them where you weak. Build them up, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much. Just praying that you let us all be more like Jesus who came, bled, and died, that we all may have the right to true life. Father, in his mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
just keeps on blessing me with amen thank you music ministry I uh, want to encourage you now to give your attention to the announcements uh, amen that are in your bulletin and uh, that run throughout the service uh, we want to pause to be thankful for all of the things that are taking place in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here at Greater St. Paul uh, so again we are thankful to uh, Brother Davis and Sister Kim and the family for your outreach efforts to share meals with, I understand, 21, 21 families, was it? Something like that. 17, 21, 25, 25 uh, families, amen. We're blessed, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for that outreach ministry. We're glad for all the things that are uh, being done here to glorify the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, it is, let me read this. We received a card. Thank you so much. Um, the world's a whole lot better place because of people like you who bring so much happiness with nice things they do. And with your recent thoughtfulness, still very much in mind, this is meant to bring a thank you of the very warmest kind. Sincerely, the Graves Johnson family, we were blessed to be able to share with them a repast meal at the, after the homecoming of their loved one. And to that end, they sent a check for $100 and we will deposit it. We continue to pray for that family, uh, amen, and lift them up in their time of bereavement. Well, now it's time to worship God by the presentation of our tithe and offering. We learn in the word of God that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Will you say amen? amen. And that God loves a, a cheerful giver. Our officers are coming now to prepare the table. Uh, and as you stand where you are, if you will face the outer walls, our ushers will give directions from the rear. Have you come now thankful for his offering? Bless those that gave, bless those that didn't have, but still desired to give. In the you pray, man. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Before this music uh, ministry comes back um, to us this morning, uh, we're happy and honored to have in our presence another set of newlyweds. Uh, amen. Come on. <laughs> Put your hands together for Brother and Sister Smith. Um, Brother Smith, amen, come on, stand, stand with us. Amen. Amen, God bless you. Amen. I, I want you to, if you'll be so kind, delay for me one week. We have a new um, welcome committee uh, that's being seated and, and they will 
be ready next Sunday um, to welcome uh, new members and new visitors um, that are here for the first time. So we're going to delay, Brother Smith, your welcome to next week. And then next week, we're going to roll out the red carpet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, give the Smith family a hand clap. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. Our music mm -hmm.
Say amen again. If the Holy Ghost ever got a hold of you, say amen. <laughs> amen. That song reminds me of the old, old school church, you know, where they used to have the Mona's bench there. Amen. And Grandma or Papa would take you to revival and you have to sit on the Mona's bench. Sit there all week until the Holy Ghost <laughs> get a hold of you. Then you can sing with the choir. You say, I don't know what it was, but something got a hold on me. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? I went to the meeting one night and my heart just wasn't right. I knew I wasn't right when I went. I knew I wasn't right when I sat on the pew and I had no intention to get right. But something got a hold on me. Help me in here, Holy Ghost. Oh, what a blessing. Thank you to this choir. Would you give the choir another hand clap of praise? Thank you for the song ministry. Thank you, Brother Deacons, for the devotion. And we're thankful to God for all of those that serve in ministry. Praise God for our ushers who make us comfortable in the worship service, to our technicians. So thankful to all of those that join us by way of social media. And then to the ones that make social media possible. Thank God for Sister Franklin and to all of my father's children. Yeah, amen. To all my father's children, what a tremendous blessing it is to be here and to have this another opportunity to worship and praise our God 
who has been so good to us. Hadn't it been good? Amen. Thank God. What a blessing it is to see you, Sister Gilchrist. Thank you so much. It's a blessing to see you. Uh, amen to all of those that are here. I want to call names, but my, my eyeglasses, I don't have my glasses on. I, I can't see Danielle's sister real good. I ain't sure. I, I don't, don't want to call any names, but I'm so happy to see all of you. What a blessing um, it is to have the strength and support of Dr. Easter. Uh, amen on the roster. Amen. Uh, we used to continue to do that evangelistic work. Thank God for our own Reverend Smith. Amen. Sister Smith, who are with us. Amen. To all my father's children, it's good to be here. That is a passage of scripture. I think I'm, I need to tell you, usually I say I won't keep you long, but I'm probably going to be kind of long today. Amen. And if you, if, you have to, if you have to tip on out, just go on, tip out. Don't make no ruckus. Just go on, go on about your business. Just go on now. Just go on. Acts chapter 2. I'm concerned. I am concerned, my brothers and sisters. Um, and the Lord has really moving on the altar of my heart concerning the church. And last week we were able to talk about from this second chapter of the book of Acts about how they had all things in common. And, and uh, when, when Monday came, I usually start either Sunday evening, I start praying and meditating towards the next message. The Lord wouldn't let me out of the second chapter of Acts. And so today we want to revisit Acts chapter 2. Right, if you find the Acts chapter 2, would you be kind to stand with us in the sanctuary and all over those that will stand for the reverence of the word of God. And then Acts chapter 2, I want to back up and I want to get verse, verses 1 through 4. The scripture says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The word of God for the people of God. And from these few verses and for a few moments this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about the miracles and the mouth. I want to preach about the miracles and the mouth. Talk about the miracles and the mouth. Speech itself is a miracle. I think I shared with you before while researching, I, I looked up what it takes to talk. What happens when we speak? And I found out that the cerebral cortex of the brain sends a signal to the broker's speech center. That's where words are formulated. This area lies on the lateral side of the dominant brain. And that right, so Smith is medical, she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> With the aid of the motor cortex on both sides of the brain, messages are sent deep into the brain where the medulla lies. Here, two carnal nerves, the twelfth which controls the tongue and the seventh which controls the mouth are stimulated into action. At the same time, the cerebral motor cortex 
takes over voluntary control of the respiration from the medulla oblongata. Signals are sent down the phrenic nerves to the diaphragm and the thoracic nerves. This causes the person to exhale upon command. The combination of all of this produces speech. I go through all of that and sell that to you not to impress you with my knowledge because you know I'm not a medical doctor and I don't have medical knowledge. But simply to emphasize the fact that just to be able to speak is a miracle. God has ordained and organized sophisticated systems within our bodies which miraculously work together to produce a desired end. That's what the church is. The church is a body of sophisticated systems, members in ministry organized and ordained, anointed by God to miraculously work together as the body of Christ proclaiming to a lost world salvation and the kingdom of God. That's why John the Baptist stood in the river Jordan and cried out, the kingdom of God is at hand. He was crying out to a dying world that you don't have to die and be lost in your sins and go to hell because of the anointing of God upon his life. He could call out with his mouth miraculously that salvation was at hand. The kingdom of God was at hand. The truth of the scripture teaches us, my brothers and my sisters, that the history of the people of God was not always smooth sailing with wonderful holy people that always did everything right. Let me say that again. The history of the study of the word of God teaches us that the people of God was not always smooth sailing by wonderful holy people who always did everything right. And though we sometimes sit on the pews sanctimoniously like we are above sin, the truth is the history of the people of God tell us that we ain't always been as saved as we pretend to be. Amen. And so before we get to the day of Pentecost, can I look back and, and research a few things about the people of God? About the way that God miraculously brought them. God by miracles, signs and wonders miraculously brought them, but they weren't always as holy as they pretended to be. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches us that God, when they were in Egypt, God saw their affliction. As they were slaves in Egypt, watch this, and God brought them out of bondage. Oh, you would think that there was a praise party that never stopped that was going on then. But you find out it wasn't long after God brought them out of bondage that the first point that they murmured with their mouth. God had miraculously delivered them. And they murmured with their mouth. You remember they had complained about Pharaoh because Pharaoh was a tough task master. He was a slave driver and Pharaoh, there came a Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph and this Pharaoh, because God had been blessing his people, this Pharaoh decided to increase the burdens on the people of God. So they complained. God then called Moses and he, he told Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Let me bring you on board again. God called Moses and he said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. One more time. God called Moses and he said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my, what, did you hear what I said? He didn't tell Moses to go shoot Pharaoh. He said, go tell Pharaoh. He didn't say, go cut Pharaoh. He said, go tell Pharaoh. I'm talking about the miracle and the mouth. God said to Moses, use your mouth and go tell Pharaoh to let my 
people go. They were liberated. They were delivered and defended. God brought them out of Egypt, crossed them over the Red Sea, and was leading them in the wilderness. And then you know what they did? They turned and complained about God. Here it is, Numbers 21 and 5. It says, and the people spake against God and against Moses. They said, wherefore have ye brought us up here out of Egypt into the wilderness to die? Because I don't like the bread. Uh, in other words, my brothers and sisters, you find when you look at the history of the people of God that they had a pathology of murmuring. Rather than declare the miracles of God with their mouths, they murmured with their mouth. They should have been praising, but they were pouting. Uh, they were complaining instead of conquering. Instead of being helpful, they were hurtful to the cause of the kingdom of God. They grumbled against God instead of glorifying God. After all that God had done, they yet grumbled. What I'm trying to say is that some people have a pathology a predisposition to murmuring. Some people are predisposed to murmur. So that no matter what you do, they will find a reason to complain. Do you know anybody like that? No matter what you do, they're going to find a reason. You can buy them a brand new Cadillac. And they go, well, now, nah, that's nice, but I really wanted a BMW. Yeah. Am I preaching to anybody yet? Yeah. Some people are predisposed to murmuring. This is a nice car, but that's not my color, not my color. And, you, and you're like, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. You was walking. Some people are pathologically predisposed to murmur. What should have been, watch this, what should have been an 11 day journey turned out being a 40 a 40 year march through the wilderness. No, y'all ain't hearing me. What should have been an 11 day journey? Day one, day two, day three, follow the cloud, follow the fire. Day four, day five, day six, seven, eight, day nine, day ten, day eleven. We made it. What should have been an 11-day journey ended up being a 40-year. Y'all ready to go? Ah, we, is we leaving this morning? Yo, yo. Come on, we got to get in line, got to hurry. I don't, well, I don't really feel like it. We go, is we going to leave? Okay, come on, everybody else going. You show everybody going. Okay, let's go. We're going. Yeah, amen. Everybody going here. Yeah. Who said we would need to go this way? I don't think we really ought to go this way. I, I see. You know, because dad and them, dad and them used to turn left right here. Instead of going right, dad and them used to turn left. And they wandered. And they wandered. And as they wandered, they murmured with their mouth. Can't you see them murmuring? Who's leading now? Who said he should lead? I don't like the way they go. Do you see how rough this road is? Could, we could have traveled another road. Here we are all the way up. Now we got to go up this hill. I don't want to go up this hill. Let's go now. Let's, let's go the other way. I don't like this way. I think it's a better way. Year two, year three. Are you praying with me, anybody? And I, I think this is the best way to go. How long are we going to be out here on this road? Does anybody know how long it's going to take? I don't know how long, but child, I'm so, I'm so tired of wondering. Ouch, something bit me. I'm so tired of going through 
all of this stuff. Anybody bring any bug spray? I need some bug spray because bugs are all over, over the place here. Year five, year six, year 10, year 15. Here we go. I'm tired of going. What we got to eat? Anybody bring anything to eat? I got some crackers and peanut butter. I'm tired of crackers and peanut butter. Day tw year 20, year 25. Yeah, they, woo, I'm so tired. I, I'm ready to. Can we go back? It was better if we had just stayed where we were. Look at us. We way out here. Where we at now? I don't know where we at. Well, which way we going? I don't know. Why is he leading? I think she know the way better. Daddy said, you ought not go that way. Daddy said, go this year. To year 25, year 27, year 30. Here I was. I left. I left as a teenager. I, I live as a teenager, but now here we are, year 35. My my back hurt me. I can't I can't hardly make it. I, I, I wish I wish y'all would just let me. Murmuring, murmuring. What should have been an 11 day journey? Year 38. Oh, this hill so so hard, but, but look like look like we're gonna make it. Forty years, forty years, and watch this: the people that got there wasn't the same people that started off. Don't let God have to completely wipe out a people before we are able to see the promise of God, the miracles of God manifested. They murmured with their mouth. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, that's an Old Testament overview of the people of God. But murmuring wasn't all they did with the miracles. Sometime, Reverend Dr. Easter, they muted their mouth with the miracles. After all God had did, sometimes they muted with their mouth. I, I heard an old preacher say one day, I'd much rather have a loud verbal enemy than a silent friend. <laughs> they muted their mouths. Here, here it is, Romans chapter 10. Paul says, for, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not a calling to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is, which is of the works, that if a man doeth those things, he shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of Christ speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to raise up Christ again from the dead. Watch this, Paul says, but the word of God is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. That if you shall confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, Thou shalt be saved. Confession with the mouth. In other words, Paul was saying they were silent about what they should have been shouting about. I said they were silent about what they should have been shouting about. I said they were silent about what they should have been shouting about. He woke me up this morning. They were silent about what they should have been shouting about. A reasonable portion of health and strength clothed and in my right mind. They were silent about what they should have been shouting about. He brought me safely over the highways and byways. They were silent about what they should have been shouting about. He healed my body. They were silent about what they should have been shouting about. Gave me peace of mind. Let me lay down and sleep all night. They were silent about what they should have been 
shouting about. They were silent in service. And so the, the state evangelism chair couldn't find anybody to go out and do evangelism because they were silent about what they should have been shouting about. Go out to the hedges and the highways and compel men, women, boys, and girls to come to Christ. They were silent about what they should have been shouting about. They were silent in the sanctuary. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye people serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Lord Jesus. In the sanctuary, the psalmist says, let everything that have breath praise our God. And we sit silently in the sanctuary. They were silent about what they should have been shouting about. And even when it comes to the sacrament, they were silent about the sacrament. They would take it, but they wouldn't talk about it. They would take it, but they didn't treasure it. They would take it, but they didn't teach it. They would take it, but they didn't tell it. They would take it, but they wouldn't testify. You know why? Because they didn't want anybody to know why they needed to take it. So when it comes to Christ, their mouths were muted. When it comes to telling a dying world, yes, I too was lost in my sin. Their mouths were muted. When it came to being for real about their struggle with sin themselves, their mouths were muted and they sat silently by. Not only the multitudes, but the ministers. Their mouths too were muted. I'm finna get to my text, don't worry. Look, look, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, Satan desires to sift you as we, but don't worry because I prayed for you. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I'll fight with you to the death. Don't worry about me. I'll get your back, Lord. I'll fight to the death. Yet, when Jesus is arrested, as Jesus is carried to the judgment hall, Peter's mouth is muted. He stood by the fire and they said, uh, aren't you one of his disciples? Peter said, no. I don't know him. I don't know him. And let's don't pick on Peter because Peter's mouth was muted, but the other disciples, they were not only muted, but they were missing Help me in here, Holy Ghost. It was sad. It's sad today, my brothers and sisters, how many of not only the multitude, but, but how many ministers are missing when it comes to the service of the kingdom of God. It's a sad testimony how absent we are from what we're supposed to be doing. And so now, as Christ has been crucified and buried in a barber tomb. Now as Christ rises up from the grave because the disciples were not only muted but missing, Jesus had to call another meeting. He sent them to meet him in Galilee because he had to assure them that he still had all power. Somebody need to know that today. 
somebody, especially after walking in some of our churches and, and see the vacancies and the absence, and to see the lack of spirituality, to see the grumbling and mumbling and complaining and murmuring, somebody needs to be reminded that though Jesus died and was buried early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave and right now in year 20 and 22, Corona don't have the, the victory. Jesus Christ still has all power in his hands. And so he called them to a meeting and there with his disciples. My brothers and sisters, he compelled them to go out and compel the folks to come. He reminded them of the miracles and then he told them to use their mouths. Go ye therefore and make disciples. And now a text says today that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the text says they were all with one accord. That's what I tried to tell you last week. I, I tried to tell you there was a period when they all had things in common. And they were much stronger and much more effective and much happier because they all had all things in common. How did they get there? Well, they were there in the upper room on the day of Pentecost and they were all there. And they were all on one accord. Ain't that a miracle? I mean, it's miraculous how God put these systems in our body. All of the things that our body has to go through in order to speak. All of the things that has to happen when our central nervous system in order for us to stand up and walk. All of the coordinated nerves and all of the coordinated things in our bodies that have to work together in order for us to see. Isn't it wonderful how God miraculously put us together so that we could function as one body? And so it is. He ordained that the church should represent the body of Christ. And miraculously, all of these ministries should come together. And when they all get together, and when they're all in one place, and when they're all on one accord, the miracles can happen. And I know there's somebody here today, my brothers and sisters, in this sanctuary that needs a miracle. And I want you to know that God is still in the business of working miracles and that we would all get together on one accord, in one place. God can still work miracles. They were all on one accord. Oh, in one place, the text says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house. Look at God. God didn't only work on this side and leave this side out in the cold. Have I got a witness in here today? Watch this. God does not only anoint the choir to worship and praise his name and leave the pew silently sitting by. That if God is going to be glorified, somehow we have to let the miracle of God work in the choir and on the deacon bench and on the pew and on the back door in the ushers and in the musicians. All of us got to get together and work together for the glory of the kingdom of God. They were all in the house. They appeared unto them cloven tongues as, a, as of fire. And it sat upon, watch this, upon each of them. Forgive me, brothers and sisters, 
if I get a little suspicious when only one person catches fire with the Holy Ghost and everybody else are left to sit back like spectators and watch them dance all by themselves. I get a little suspicious because when I read it here in the word of God, the Bible says that the spirit of God filled the house. How many know today that God's his Holy Spirit is big enough to fill the house. How many know today that when the Spirit of God is moving in the atmosphere, people will say something got a hold of me. Oh, yes, it did. I said something got a hold on me. Yes, I went to a meeting one night. Oh, my heart wasn't right. But something, can anybody say something? Something, I don't know where it was something I don't know where it came from but something got to moving on the inside I tried to keep my peace I tried to quench the spirit but I just couldn't hold it joy got a hold on me yes I love it got a hold on me the Holy Spirit they fill the house. Landing on each of them, I'm, I'm through. And here what, here what Dr. Luke said, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, how is it that back then, when the Holy Ghost moved, they couldn't help it? But today, when the Holy Ghost moved, uh, only I can feel it, and everybody else can. You know what I mean? I mean, I can't shout unless I'm teaching the lesson. Help me, Holy Ghost. I don't get excited unless I'm taking up the offering. I mean, we ain't ready to praise God until I say, come on, let everybody, let's praise the God. Come on. And so my brothers and sisters, God, I declare still a miracle, a miracle working God. God uh, is still in the miracle working business. I'm ready. God is still making a way out of no way. And I'm done. I preach the best I can. And I'm ready now to turn it over. But before I go, I want to leave with this admonition. Listen to me real close. If God has never done anything for you, if God has never put up with your murmuring, if God has never looked beyond your mischief, if God has never been patient with your misdeeds, if God has never 
tolerated your mess then I want you to sit back and don't say a mumbling word but on the other hand if God has brought you through your murmuring if God has brought you through your mischief if God has delivered you from your mess if God has been a bridge over your troubled waters I want to ask you today to take about 30 seconds here in the sanctuary and unmute your mouth and for 30 seconds I want to ask somebody to lift up your voice and give God your greatest praise for 30 seconds lift up your hands and tell Lord, Lord, thank you this evening. If God has worked miracles in your life, take about 30 seconds to magnify the Lord. Say, I will bless the Lord at all time. Oh, his praise. I said his praise. Oh, his praise shall be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the Lord that's only 10 seconds that's the best you got that's only 15 seconds God ain't been no better to you than that thank God ain't he been good ain't he been good oh ain't he been good tell him thank you for saving me thank you for making a way for me thank you thank you lord Amen. There was be somebody in here who won't be included. As the pastor said, God is all over the house. And if it has touched you today, if the Holy Ghost have touched you today, the doors of the church are open. Will there be one come to Jesus today? Maybe for prayer. You might have been in a backslidden condition. 